Hey everybody and welcome to Northern Lion Plays West of Loathing. Thank you to you guys for your support on the Let's Look At, your requests to see it, and my desire to do it. Well, less thank you to me, more thank you to, to the uh, developers for making an excellent RPG that in my hour or so of playing it I enjoyed and decided, you know what, I'm always on the lookout for standalone stuff that I can play through. The game is hilarious. It's a good opportunity for me to read a lot of dialogue and play something that's uh, fun, easy, and, and hopefully share uh, an experience with you guys. So we're going to start a new game here. If you haven't watched the Let's Look At, you're going to pick it up pretty fast. It's an RPG that's very, very dialogue heavy. So expect me to be reading an awful lot. I know that's going to be people's uh, question right off the bat. Are you going to read every piece of dialogue? That's my intention. Every piece of dialogue I come across. Now, I might not walk into every NPC over the course of the game, but I will, you know, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So, um, we need to get a protagonist here. Can we actually... I thought maybe we could be a cat or an owl, but, oh, I see, this changes our name. I get it. Okay. We're just gonna randomize. I mean, that does look like me, but it's a little boring, right? Well, I guess that's as good as it gets. <laughs> Wanted for protagonizing. Guess we could shoot these and raise the amount of meat. I'm not sure if that actually matters. Calvin Barkley, let's edit our name. Yeah, enter a first name. Nor, and then last name, Thurnlian. There you go. It's Nor Thurnlian. Good Western name. We're going to click play. And uh, previously, I was playing as a cow puncher, which is just like the melee class. But I kind of like, I mean, bean slinging is like some... It's the mage class. Snake oiler seems cool to me. Maybe kind of like an elemental ranged class. Like a like a rogue mixed with a necromancer or something like that. Anyway, or a plague doctor from Darkest Dungeon. We'll go snake oiler. Snake oilers rely on their moxie and chutzpah to tame the snakes. Their fearlessness to extract potent oils from those snakes and their cleverness to manufacture and sell potions made from those oils. Well, if that doesn't sound like me, I don't know what does. You've heard snake oilers are doing really well out west since the cows came home. Everybody needs potions and hope in these dark days. And also, out west is where all the best snakes live. I can't deny that. I want to be a snake oiler. Okay. So the general structure of this, we're going to do like half hour-ish episodes. We're going to try to explore. We're going to try to solve the puzzles live on camera. Even if that involves me sometimes breaking out a notepad document and putting it on screen. You read the spine of one of your books. Emmett Danger in the Secret of Rattlesnake Forest. I read that one ten times. Edith Brown in the Mystery of the Forgotten Gulch. The Miracle Cursed Gulch. May Drew and the Secret of the Forbidden Barn. Okay, you know what? We don't need that. Goodbye desk. We'll comb our hair and gain one experience. There are opportunities to get a little bit more experience here. Um, early on and maybe get a level before we leave. Hey, Russell, how we doing? Ka. I'm gonna miss you, buddy. Ka, ka, ka. Feed Russell the cricket. You grab a cricket from your cricket bag and feed it to Russell. He coos appreciatively and nuzzles your hand. Goodbye, Russell. Be good. Or maybe it's time for you to leave, too. You know, if I was leaving home, I would tell the cats to be good. But let's let's release him. Maybe he'll come back and help us later or something. You open your bedroom window, not pictured, and unlatch the door to Russell's cage. He winks at you, caws one last time, and then flies away to the west. Let's go. Sentimental. No breathing. Don't give an F if I cut my arm bleeding. Again, some more experience for stacking firewood. This hearth really puts the hearth in hearth and home. You're really going to miss mom's cooking. It's mom's pie safe. It keeps all her pies safe. You'll miss meals with the family. We go into our little brother's room. And I think, by the way, I haven't played the whole game through. I've only played about an hour and a half, two hours. So pretty soon we're going to start seeing stuff that is new to me. I believe there's a book in here we can read, though. You pick up one of your brother's weird books and flip through it. Uber Dianzel der Primzalen unter einer Gegeben in Grossa. I think this is about math, maybe? I have no idea. It's the, sa it's the same book. Oh, now it's Solutio Problematis ad Geometrium Situs Pertinitis. And Vorlesungen uber Zalen Theory. What a weird kid. Yeah, okay. Well, we got a puzzle cube, regardless. So I think if we go into our inventory, we can actually solve the Rubik's Cube, and then we get a little bit more experience. And we'll try to level up, uh, not with auto levels, by the way, over the course of this one. I've been using auto levels, or I used auto levels uh, in my, like, let's look at a playthrough. But we'll try to do it with a little bit more customization. Your mom smiles warmly as you approach. I'm leaving now, mom. We're gonna miss you, kiddo. Oh, and before you leave, I got you a present. A present? Yeah, it's that book you wanted for Crimbo. I know it's early, but the one about picking locks? Oh, boy. The one about desert survival, oh boy, or the one about bartering, oh boy. So this is like our 
Squirtle, Charmander, uh, Bulbasaur sort of pick here. I'm going to go for pick and locks. Because I, I always like lock picking in games because I'm probably going to take the skill regardless. I might as well start with it. Please be careful out there. Write us a letter when you can. She hugs you. I will, Mom. Goodbye. And we'll go into our inventory and uh, read lock picking expertise. After you're done reading it, you donate it to a local orphanage. Soon those orphans will be able to make their escape. Go, orphans, go. Your father morosely jabs at the haystack. The hat doesn't fit you, Dad. I'll grow into it. This hat looks like a wicker basket. It's time for me to leave. His lip quivers a little bit. Listen, I want you to have this. It's your grandmother's briefcase full of snakes. You got an item. Briefcake, briefcase full of snakes. Although a briefcake could be like a great thing for a bachelorette party or something. Thanks, Dad. Good luck up there. Uh, good luck out there. Be sure to say goodbye to your mother. I did. Goodbye, Dad. And I think we search the haystack. We get a needle, which is actually a lockpick. And then we'll talk to our younger brother who uh, looks like me. Your brother Rufus is standing here looking nervous. He's pretty good at looking nervous. Give him his puzzle back. You hand him the puzzle and he starts fidgeting with it. Hey, Rufus, time for me to head west. I still don't understand why you're leaving. Let me lean into that. I'll do my Dan Giesling voice. Uh, Dan Giesling as me. Well, I still don't understand why you're leaving. He's got a point, you know. Why are you going west anyway? To help people? To seek my fortune? Or to get off this stupid farm? I'm going to say to seek my fortune. I don't want to insult my family farm. At least they have some equity. So we'll to seek my fortune. There's just no opportunity here, kid. If I'm going to make something of myself, i got to go where I can make some meat. But it's so dangerous. 60% of the people who go west get killed within a year, and that statistic is from before the cows came home. I'll be okay. You worry about taking care of mom and dad, I'll worry about me. Okay, if you say so. I still think you'll be dead by Crimbo. It's actually called Dead by Daylight. But I will miss you, Rufus. Okay, he says. You know what? Rufus, you're a good kid. Wish you were a little bit more sentimental with me, but you're, you're a good kid nonetheless. Okay, time to head west. I do appreciate that, by the way, even in this, like, 2D side-scroller, west is to the left. Looks like this isn't your first rodeo. Would you like to skip the Boring Springs prologue and head straight to Dirtwater? Any horses or partners you unlocked in any previous game will be available to you, and you'll start with 465 meat and some of the more important items from Boring Springs. Dude, absolutely not. I don't want to skip the prologue. I want to play the prologue again because there's stuff that we can get there. Plus, you can see, like, the, the credits sequence here if you want. Um, I have to... The, the, the reason I like the credits sequence is because I think they it establishes the tone for the game very well. Like, when I first saw this, I was like, yeah, cinematographer, that makes sense. Film editor? Not totally sure about that one. And then they get into, like, key grip, best boy, stuntman, etc. Dialect, dialect coach, for example. And then you start to wonder, can I trust anything? Are these even the real names? I mean, Wes Cleveland, it sounds like a real name, but it also sounds like someone who would have worked on a Western, you know, in like the 1960s or something. Chris Moyer, hey, he sounds like a biology professor or something like that. Ryan Ike, name after my own heart. Here comes the boom, ready or not. 200 miles later. That's 40% of a song by the Proclaimers. So this is the, um... The prologue to the game, but it, it's kind of like a glorified tutorial. When people say glorified, they usually mean it badly, but um, I, I like the prologue because it kind of gets us into the swing of things pretty early. Well, the bad news is that you fell off the cart and got knocked out for a couple of hours, and now you got no ride, no meat, and no prospects. The good news is that you're in a town rather than a gulch somewhere. They love gulch in this game. The gulch count is at like three already. Not much of a town, though. Okay. It's the only one I got. Get up and dust yourself off. All right, so I'm gonna start picking up everything that I can find. It pays to go like left to right here and see what you can pick up. Like you can walk into cactuses, you can step on a horse poop, talk to this guy. Step right up, step right up, Braid's the name and trades the game. You seriously doubt that his name is Braid. Howdy. Howdy Braid, what are you trading? Well sir, today I'm trading, this is like a Mathis voice now. Today I'm trading locks for soap and a stick of dynamite for a needle. And to the cunning Skinner, who brings me three rattlesnake hides. Well, to that adventurous soul, I will trade a fine silver pocket watch. Three rattlesnake hides. Okay. Um, well, I'll take some dynamite for this needle. Braid, which is so not a name, takes your needle and hands you a stick of dynamite. Be careful with this now. You got item dynamite. Alright. So we have dynamite, but we now have no lockpick. 
You approach the weird Cactus Man hybrid and he smiles at you. Howdy, Cactus Man. Howdy yourself, and the name's Bill. Cactus Bill. What happened to you, Bill? Well, to be honest, partner, I drank too much cactus beer and it turned me into a cactus. That's what happened to the roots, is what I've heard. Doc Alice warned me this would happen, but I didn't listen. And that's why they call you Cactus Bill? No, that's just a coincidence. Does it hurt? Does what hurt? You know, being a cactus. Oh, haha. Ha. No, it's actually kind of nice. The natural fermentation process inside of the cactus part of me keeps me pretty drunk most of the time. I guess it is a mite boring. Yeah, I bet. It wouldn't be so bad if I had something to read. You don't happen to have a newspaper or anything, do you? No, sorry. Well, if you happen to find one, keep me in mind. Will do, Cactus Bill. Will do. So we, uh, we're looking for a cactus. We're looking for other stuff to trade to braid. By Jonathan Blow. We can go into the Sheriff's office. See what's going on here. Howdy, stranger. Welcome to Boring Springs. I'm the Sheriff in these parts. The what? He sighs. The Sheriff, okay? Blasted sign painters. Say, you wouldn't be having a looking for work, would you? Well, I did come out here to get my fortune, so as a matter of fact, I am. Great, because I happen to have some. There's a gang of hoodlums around here, what call themselves the Fricker Gang. The last time I arrested one of them, they busted him out and took my cell door with them. It ain't a, well, it ain't much good without the door. And, and I need somebody tough, smart, and or slick to go fetch it back for me. Uh, you know, let's, let's get, let's milk the dialogue here. I want to see how they get themselves out of this dialogue trap. Why don't you do it? You're the sheriff after all. I gotta stay here and practice my chair tipping. All right, I'll give it a shot. Funny you should say that because I'm sending the deputy along with you to keep you out of trouble. He takes a pistol out of his desk and hands it to you. You got an item, deputy pistol. Deputy, you deputized a gun? You're new in town. Maybe you ain't noticed, but there ain't much to do in here except drink. Here, let me write down where the Fricker Gang's hideout is for you. He makes a little note on your map. You discover a new map location, the Fricker Gang's hideout. Got it, I will be back with the door. Let me, let me in, let me in. Oh, dude. We get a mug. You don't know why those are important yet, potentially, but mugs can be returned for meat, which is currency, basically. Help wanted. Bimmy Fricker for Face Steven. 420 meat. Help wanted. Wanted poster artist. Apply in person at the Yuma Marshal's office. Wanted for bird theft. Naked Mike Bernstein. Reward 200 meat. We can't take those on his contracts yet, though. All right. Take me to the Fricker Gang's hideout, please. Thud Fricker, the Fricker Gang's intrepid lookout, appears to be taking a little nap. Wake him up, just shoot him, or ignore him. Well, I mean, obviously, just shoot him. Just like the, the sitcom from the late 90s, early 2000s, just shoot him. That doesn't seem very sportsmanlike. You sure you want to do that? Yes. Really? You're just going to gun down a hapless sleeping man in cold blood? Cold is the only blood I have. Cold is the only blood I got. Shoot him. He's just a kid. Everybody dies. Pull the trigger. Dang, partner, you got a perk, Ruthless. You're a cold-blooded killer and people can see it in your eyes. It's often the last thing they see, in fact. Ruthless options will be available in some situations. How could you not, though, in that situation? By the way, let's look at our inventory. What the heck is a briefcase full of snakes? We should look inside, I guess. This is the briefcase you keep your favorite snakes in, Venom level three, Medicine level three. There's a lot of snakes in this briefcase. Um, let's extract some medicine. We got an item, snake medicine. Let's extract some venom. You got an item, basic venom vial. Close the briefcase. I don't know, maybe we can repopulate it somehow. It's used in combat to poison, used in combat to heal. Okay, I gotcha, I gotcha. We need foraging to get a beer barrel cactus uh, prompt here, but we can maybe search this. You got 25 meat. Oh, we also got something else there. A pair of silver cufflinks. So we probably sell that. And, uh, I think there was something else on the map, maybe, that got... No, I don't know. I didn't see the last one. Um, okay. Into the cave we go. One of the Fricker boys is dozing in a bathtub. Drown him, tie him up, or say, Psst, can you pass the soap? I think the first time I tied him up, I'm gonna ask him if he can pass the soap, though. Because I, I just remembered now, we can trade soap to braid in the town for something else. Maybe this game has the right kind of tone for that to work. He mumbles and hands you a bar of soap before sinking deeper into both sleep and the tub. Dude, we've done it. Bar of soap. Dr. Sweckleton's Pure Castile Soap. Where this comes from, they call it thope. Is that a joke about the Castilian accent? I don't know. 
It's possible. The game is smarter than I am. One of the Fricker boys is dozing in the bathtub. Don't disturb him. Unnecessary. You cautiously approach the Fricker gang. They're pretty engrossed in their poker game, so it doesn't actually require that much caution. You hide behind a barrel and eavesdrop on their conversation for a while. The one with the eye patch is quiet, but you gather that his name is Snipe, and that the squirrely one is his brother Wimpy. What's your play here? Shoot one of them in the back, approach them and talk, or leave without alerting them. Well, we are ruthless. Let's shoot one of them in the back. You draw your pistol and execute the one with the eye patch. His brother screams, jumps behind a barrel, and starts firing at you wildly. Let's go. I didn't want to fight two of them, because I'm worried that, um, you know, this is the first time I've done combat uh, with uh, the Snake Mancer, or the, the Snake Oil Salesman. Snake Oilsman? Oil Snake Man? I forgot his name. Anyway, um, so we can shoot our gun. It's... We'll hit a sturdy barrel instead, unfortunately. We can do a melee attack, but we have no melee weapon, so it sucks. We can do a snake whip. You will deal five damage and apply one poison. We can pull a snake out of our briefcase and deploy it on your side of the battlefield. Let's try this. Does this take a snake? Like, does it consume a snake from our briefcase? Oh my god. He missed me. So we'll just start shooting, I guess, now that the snake has destroyed the barrel. The snake does 5 HP, or like near 5 HP, but it doesn't apply poison, so we might in some situations want to apply the poison. Especially if this actually consumes a snake from our briefcase, but we'll see. The leaders of the Fricker gang are dead by your hand. The Sheriff will be proud, though you're not sure how your mother would feel. You gain 10 experience, level up. Time to recover the Sheriff's door. Grab that mug. Grab 50 meat. We get the cell door. No, we, that definitely does not consume a snake, actually. I wonder if, if we should actually just take all the venom and all the medicine out of it. And then we still keep the briefcase. I guess the briefcase is a never-ending supply of snakes as long as we have action points. Um, I'm just going to tie this dude up. He's still, a, he's still a villain. One of the Fricker boys is dozing in a bathtub. You grab a, length of, or a nearby length of rope, carefully tie his hands together, and then to the handles of the tub. The sheriff can come collect him later. All right. I think that might give us more rewards on the way back, but to be honest with you, I'm not totally sure. Um, but we will go map and head back to the town of Boring Springs. See, it's not much of a tutorial. And then we'll go talk to the sheriff here. I don't know why I have my mouse on the screen all the time. I see the Fricker gang hasn't put a stop to your breathing. Did you rescue my, my cell door? You hand the sheriff his door and he hangs it back on its hinges. Nice work, stranger. This here prison cell just got about four times more secure. Are there any Fricker boys left for me to round up? Yes, one or two that are asleep on the job, plus the poor kid I shot in the back of the head. I'll go round him up shortly then. Looks like I owe you a reward. He produces a big bag of meat. You gain 400 meat. Got another little task for you if you got the time. Should be a lot simpler. What do you need? Well, the Frickers busted the lock when they took the door. Gonna need a new lock. I'll keep an eye out. Don't we get a lock um, for trading the bar of soap? Am I the world's greatest genius accidentally? All right, so it's braid again. I'll trade this soap for a lock. Look at that. You got an item, lock. Quest complete. Howdy, you managed to scare up a lock for my cell? Yes, got one right here. That'll do nicely. The sheriff puts the lock on the cell door, then accidentally drops the key and it clatters into the cell. Hellfire. Don't suppose you know how to pick a lock, stranger. You got a needle handy? I'll see what I can do. So that's unfortunate. I traded the needle for a stick of dynamite, but Life goes on. All right, let's go to the bar here. As you walk into the saloon, the crazy-eyed guy sitting to the left of the door shrieks and waves at you to get your attention. Hey, where's your hat, dag nabbit? Well, I... You can't drink in here without a hat. Taint proper. He points to the take-a-hat, leave-a-hat box next to the door. Check out the box. You look through the hat box and find a battered Darby. That looks like something you'd wear. You put the hat... Or you grab the hat and put it on. Thanks, sir. Pete! Thanks, Pete. He gives you a friendly, if somewhat twitchy, nod. Say, Fowler. Yeah? You heading west? If you want some company, I'd be more than happy to come along. Just let me know. Well, uh, no pressure. All right. I'll keep it in mind, Pete. Um, so if you saw the Let's Look At, you know that there is some spittoon recurring jokes that happen over the course of West of Loathing. Every time we go into a spittoon, we get loot, but it grosses us out every time. 
It's a spittoon. People spit into it. You know without even looking in it that it's absolutely disgusting. Yeah, it's full of spit. Regular spit. Gross tobacco spit. Chewing gum. And it even looks like a few teeth as well. It's disgusting. And the smell. Even from a distance, it smells horrible. You are now on your hands and knees, peering into a filth-encrusted spittoon. I don't... I don't understand what is wrong with you. Wait. Is there something shining at the bottom? You reach your hand toward the spittoon. Even before you touch it, you can feel the grossness in the air, like a greasy fog enveloping the stinking brass horror. It smells like the vomit trough at a mesquite barbecue eating contest. You hesitate. You plunge your hand into the awful soup. It makes a sound like... Your skin is burning. Your eyes start to water. Your fingers make contact with something. You pull your hand out of the devil's terrine slowly, not daring to risk splashing the contents all over yourself. You appear to have gotten some kind of ring, probably some kind of disease as well. Congratulations, you got an item. Nasty ring. Hooray, so, inventory. Nasty ring. Plus one muscle, plus one mysticality. Mystic, oh, so we can look at how stats work here as well. Muscle determines how much damage your melee attacks do and how much damage you take when you get hit by melee attacks. For an example, if an attack against a bandit would normally do three damage, but your muscle is one lower than the bandits, the attack will do two difference, two damage instead. So it's like a base damage of the attack, which is probably influenced by our weapon, uh, plus the difference between our muscle stat and our enemy's muscle stat, even if it's negative. I'm assuming mysticality is the same, but for magic. And Moxie. Moxie determines how much damage your pistol attacks do and how much damage you take when you get shot by enemies. For example, if a ranged attack against a goblin would normally do three damage, but your Moxie is one higher than the goblins, the attack will do four damage instead. Okay. So that's like a pretty good stat upgrade, actually. This guy is asleep. These guys are playing poker, or at least trying to. They keep looking back and forth from their hands to the how to play poker card that came with their deck, biting their lips and concentrating real hard. Can I play? They look at you nervously. Look, I have some meat. Let's play. You put 20 meat on the table and sit down before they can say no. One of them shuffles the cards sloppily and deals a new round. You get a pair of tens plus a two, a three, and a king. Uh, let's, we have three moxie, so let's bet crazily. Eat this, all in, suckers. Sweat gushes from their faces as they each read the how to play poker card again, but eventually they both add 20 meat to the pot. Okay, read them and weep. You show your pair of tens plus two three king. The guy on the left has a full house, two jacks and three aces. And the guy on the right somehow got a straight flush, two through six in hearts. I win or hornswoggle them. Hornswoggle them. Let's hornswoggle them. I don't know what that means. You explain that jacks are worth nine points each, giving the guy on the left a total of 21 points and the guy on the right 20 and you 25 plus a king. And the king represents, oh, hey, look over there. <laughs> they look. And when they look back they don't notice the 10 meat missing from each of their piles you collect your winnings and stand up the guys thank you for helping them learn the game nice get dusted so we got pete what do you say pete who me well heck i say all kinds of things it should do like a jiggle billy for that or something for instance i've been mining these mountains longer than a slam jammered corn dog can touch the mustard whatever that means uh-huh pete takes a swig of his whiskey see you later pete so the bartender's gonna talk to us, but he's also gonna give us a bunch of meat for these mugs. You walk up to the bar and wait patiently for the bartender to notice you. While you're waiting, you see a sign taped to the back wall reading, Reward for Lost Mugs, 25 meat each. The bartender finally notices you. Howdy, cowboy. Howdy, barkeep. Name's Noor. <laughs> what bring- that's like a great name for a dude wearing a bowler hat, I think. What brings you to our little backwater? All the usual. I came out west to make my fortune. Not having much luck so far, though. Any, well, I mean, we've really increased our net worth over the course of this video, I thought. Any work around these parts? Unfortunately, Boring Springs already has more people in it than jobs. It's more of an errand town, if you catch my meaning. If you're looking for a real job, I'd recommend taking the, talking to the railroad people up by Dirtwater. The railroad? Oh, the Manifest Destiny Railroad Company. From back east, they're trying to run a line to Frisco and having a heck of a time doing so. And they're hiring? Oh, I reckon they're always hiring for one thing or another. Big company, that. How about Dirtwater? Dirtwater is interesting. It's far enough west that it's still more or less exempt from the rule of law, but not so far west that it's been burned to the ground by the damned cows. Lots of opportunities there. 
He pauses for a few seconds, lost in thought. Yeah, if I were a younger man, I'd probably head that way myself. And you mention errands. Yeah, this forsaken burg is always falling apart in one way or another. The hostlers always needing help since he hurt his leg. And that no-account Scherf could certainly stand to have somebody doing his job for him. Anything else? Well, I've got a goblin loose in the basement. Some cow poke in from the gulch didn't wipe his boots off and got spores everywhere. I think I can do that. I can probably handle a goblin. Much obliged. I'll unlock the basement door for you. And oh yeah, you'll need this. You got weak fungus side. All right. Well, I was going to take care of the goblin, but let's do some more reading. Howdy, I'm Nor. Howdy, Nor. I'm Horace. Nice to meet you. What do you do? I'm the town hostler. I don't know what that is. I'm the town horse selling guy. All right. This feels like it could come up in bar trivia one night. What is a hostler? How's that working out for you? Oh, the horses are just flying out the door. So business is booming? Nice. No, I mean the horses keep running away. I haven't sold one in ages. Oh. Is that why you're here drinking instead? Uh, yep. And me being in here drinking instead of watching the horses is probably how they keep escaping. It's one of those vicious circle things. Well, I'm in need of a horse. Do you have any left? One. Kind of a boring one, but it's got four legs and a back to sit on. Come see me at the stable and I'll be happy to show it to you. All right. The woman just glares at you. You should probably just let her drink. Can we get a new hat? We cannot get a new hat. Can we have you play something different? No. All right. Goblin territory then. Pile of old newspapers. You got an item, Boring Springs Gazette, April 20th, 1895. It's a copy of the Boring Springs newspaper from, oh, Cactus, uh, Cactus Bill wanted this. All right. Steal some whiskey, nurse brand whiskey. And, I mean, here's the goblin. All right, so I think we just want to spray him with the weak fungicide and he dies instantly. So that's easy enough. <laughs> and uh, we get extra moxie. It's going to continue to level our skills for us for now, but once we leave the tutorial or get above like level five, we can level our skills ourselves, I think. All right, so we got more moxie, which is probably good because we are going to be using our pistol on occasion. Um, by the way, let's, I mean, we got to return our mugs to this guy as well. Howdy, howdy. Good to see you again, Nor. You tip your hat to the bartender. I took care of that goblin. Thank you kindly, Nor. I knew there was a stand-up feller in you from the moment you walked in here. He reaches under the bar and grabs a bag of meat. Here you go. It's the least I can do by way of thanks. Tip your hat. Also, I found these mugs. Much obliged. You hand in the recovered mugs and collect your bounty. It's 75 meat. Who's the lady drinking whiskey out of a beer mug? That's Susie. She's a rancher from nearby. A real tough broad. Well, I never. I ain't recommend you pester her. Why is that? Lost her whole family to a cow attack recently. Got some pent-up frustrations about it. All right, well, we don't need to go down that road necessarily. So I think we're like closing in on being done with our prologue town here. First, let's talk to the cactus. Did you bring me something to read? Give him the newspaper. You give him the newspaper you found in the basement of the saloon. Much obliged, partner. Now let's see here, what can I do to return the favor? Oh, I know, my shovel. I left it behind the outhouse at Orhole Mine. It's yours if you go and get it. I'm sure you'll find a use for it. So we almost leveled up. Behind the outhouse at Orhole Mine. Got it. Thanks, Bill. Don't mention it. Now, if you could just kind of stick that newspaper to my face before you leave. Well, they don't give us an option. I will stick the newspaper to him, and he looks like he's having a good time. Um, we do want... Whoops. We do want the shovel. How do we get to Orhole Mine? I actually forgot. But we need the shovel to dig up this stuff. We gotta clean the town up and get the get the turds off the ground. Afternoon, sir. What can I do for you? How's business? Oh, you know, every day I'm hustling. To tell you the truth, it's pretty terrible. All my horses keep running away. Well, except for this completely ordinary one. That's rough. Maybe I can help. Oh, God, yes. Thank you. Please, I'll go fetch them myself. Or I'd go fetch them ex myself, except for this injury. I'll give you 300 meat each for finding them. How many are there? Three. Let me see your map. They pretty much always run away to the same places. You discover a new map location, or whole mine. You discover a new map location, Boring Springs Boneyard. You discover a new map location, Thousand Snakes Gulch. Why these places? I think they like environments that are thematically appropriate. Here, when you find one feed at some of these oats, that should send it back here. You got a, an item, bag of homing oats. How does that work? They're special 
pigeon infused oats. Okay, we'll do. See you later. So we got a to-do list now. If we open up uh, our map, we've got the homing oats that will send the hostler's horses back to them. And we also have three new locations, each one corresponding to a horse and also a little bit of gameplay. So on the next episode, we will for sure be leaving Boring Springs, getting that shovel and picking a starter horse to begin our journey with uh, from a pool of very character-rich uh, equine persuasions, I will tell you that much. But for now, that's going to do it for episode one of West of Loathing. If you enjoyed the episode, first off, check out the game for yourself on Steam. It's a wonderful, lovely little title at a pretty cheap price. And they didn't even have to pay me to say that. That'll be linked in the video description below for the Steam page. Of course, if you're enjoying the series, click the like button. It helps me out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more West of Loathing in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow, partner. <laughs>